next video, we're looking at approximating the binomial distribution by the normal probability distribution. I was going to approximate this discrete probability distribution, which is represented by the black rectangles, by the normal distribution, which is represented by the blue bell curve, right? Um, this is a by hand drawing, so it's not perfect. Obviously, um, if you've ever seen these done with a computer, they look a lot better. The rectangles actually um, intersect, usually the blue curve intersects right in the middle of those rectangles for each rectangle. It's actually usually um, a pretty good representation. But either way, the idea here is very straightforward. We're going to use this blue bell curve to approximate the probability distribution for the binomial curve here in black. The main thing we want to remember here is that the binomial curve is discrete, so it has little rectangles of probability. So in other words, for example, the probability that you end up with 9 here for x, right, the probability that x is 9 is basically going to extend from 8.5 to 9.5. That's the base of that rectangle for 9. So 9 is right in the middle of the rectangle, but the base goes down to 8.5 and, and up to 10.5, right? And that represents the base of that probability rectangle for 9. And remember, area under the curve is what we're talking about when we talk about probability. So you want to know the probability that it's exactly 9 on the binomial curve. It would just be the area of that rectangle. And of course, that's going to be equivalent to the height since the base has a width of 1 since it goes from 8.5 to 9.5. All right, that's fine. But what if I wanted to answer a question where I said something like, find the probability of you know, uh, having more than 9 successes? Well, if I'm doing more than 9 successes, if I'm talking about doing it on the binomial curve, I would do what? I would get the 10 probability rectangle, the 11 probability rectangle, the 12 probability rectangle, so on and so forth, and I would add them all up because those would all represent more than 9. So the idea of x is greater than 9 on the binomial probability would be represented by that, right? If I wanted to do that on the bell curve, though, more than 9 would actually be what? From where the 9 starts, and I would shade all of this area, right? And you would you know, get all the area here, so on and so forth, all the way across, including all the area where those black rectangles are. And there'd be a lot of overlap, right? But you would see that I would have what? If I did it that way, I'd get this extra part, this part here that wasn't originally shaded on the binomial curve. And that part here is actually what? It's actually half of the 9 rectangle, because the 9 is in the middle of the rectangle. So when I say greater than 9 on the normal curve, I would actually be picking up some of the 9 probability. And this expressly, expressly says, don't use, right? Explicitly says, do not use 9. This is x is greater than 9. Don't use 9. So I can't pick up part of that rectangle, so I have to fix that. That means on the bell curve, I have to do x is greater than 9.5. That way I start here, actually, and go over. And when I do that, you'll see that I'll have a line up perfectly with the black rectangles that I had shaded, and I won't have this part anymore. So that's going to fix that. It's going to make our approximation a little bit better. We're still going to have some error, like all these places where there's white space and no black rectangle would represent error. But the error will be a lot less because we'll be moving that whole big strip of probability there that I shouldn't be calculating, right? So this is the idea of fixing the approximation to make it a little better. They call this continuity correction. So I want you to remember that. It's called continuity correction. And it basically involves uh, making a correction for the fact that the bell curve is continuous while the binomial curve is discrete. So they call it continuity correction. Continuity correction. So if you see that phrase, it just means that you're going to add or subtract 0.5 from the x value that you're working with on the table to make sure that you're meeting the probability that you're supposed to be meeting. And we'll see how that's done here in this example. And then there's also some problem examples where we'll see it's done again. Of course, we're not going to cover every single case that could come up, but hopefully you understand the logic enough to do it on your own when different problems arise. So let's look at an example then. So we look at this example here. It says, by the probability of rolling less than nine fives or rolling a fair die 66 times. First of all, is that a binomial scenario? I think it is, right? There are n trials, so 66 trials. So there's going to be n trials. I know that n is 66, right? The probability of success is a constant. The chance that I roll a five, because that's my success here, the number of fives I roll is what we're looking for. So five is a success. The probability of that success is 1 sixth. And then the complement, the probability I fail, of course, would be 5 sixth, right? 
then you can say, well, the trials are independent. When I roll a die on the ground, it's an independent trial for the next roll. Like one roll does not affect the outcome of the other roll. Constant probability of success, yes, it's always one six. So basically here is, is a binomial scenario. Fixed number of trials, constant probability of success, independent trials, so on and so forth. So this is binomial. The problem is I can't use the binomial table here because that n is too large. The tables usually don't go past 25. This has an n of 66. So we're not going to be able to use the table to solve this. So what we want to do is use the bell curve to approximate the answer. So if I'm going to use the bell curve, I'll draw the bell curve here. And like always, I'll label an axis, a z-axis, and an x-axis. x here represents the number of fives that I roll, because this problem is about rolling a certain number of fives. I always want the mean, so we need to figure out the mean, and I'll need to know the standard deviation. That's where these values come in. We know that the mean for a binomial distribution, the mean is n times p, right? So in that case, the mean is going to be 66 times 1 6. And we know that that answer will be 11 if we work it out, right? 66 divided by 6 is 11. So the mean is going to be 11. That means right here on the curve, I expect the middle to be at 11, the mean for this binomial distribution. Now, the standard deviation is n times p times q. So let's work that out next. So it's actually the square root of n times p times q. So I'll have to take the square root of it, and that's our standard deviation. So let's figure out what that is if we plug in n and p and q. So we end up with uh, 66 times 1 sixth times 5 sixths, right? All under the square root. Let's see what that gives us. So we'll have basically 11 times 5 sixths. And we raise that to the 0.5 power, or take the square root, we get 3.0277. 3.0277. So we end up with our standard deviation, 3.0277. Give it a few decimal places so you don't introduce some error by rounding, right? All right, so don't round. Try not to round too much until the end. <clears throat> OK, now, from there, we're going to look at what we're looking for. If this is a normal bell curve problem, I would look at this statement, and it says I'm looking for less than 5, less than 9 fives when rolling a fair die 66 times. Less than 9, well, 9 on the x-axis if the number of successes is to be less than 9, it would be over here, right? So I'd have 9 here. And normally, you know, we draw our line here, we shade our region, less than 9 is to the left, so I shade to the left. And then we calculate a z-score, look up the area, and be done with it, right? Except, the problem is, is that this 9 here is not what I'm looking for. I want less than 9. In a binomial distribution, since it's discrete, less than 9 means 8, actually. So I should be looking at 8 here, not 9. In other words, I don't want to start at 9, because if I do that, I'll have that scenario where what? We have a 9 rectangle, and I'll be, you know, I'm looking to go left, right? So I'm looking to get, pick up all these other rectangles down here, you know? And if I start at 9, I'm going to be shading all of this area, right? Including half of the 9 rectangle. Well, I don't want half of the 9 rectangle, right? Because I want to make sure it's less than 9, strictly less than 9. So I better start right here. The question is, where is that? You can see on this drawing, it's eight and a half is where I need to start. So I'm not going to use nine. I'm going to use my continuity correction. I'm going to subtract the half from nine, and I'm going to get eight and a half. And now it works, right? 8.5 is the correct value that I need to use. So I'll go from 8.5 over, and that will be the correct solution. All right, and so to finish the problem, the rest is just you know what we did normally on the bell curve. So here you should be familiar with it. We'll get a z-score, which will be 8.5 minus 11 over 3.0277. And then from there, that turns out to be 8.5 minus 11 <clears throat> divided by 3.0277. And we get the answer negative 0.83. Minus 0.83. We round it to two places because we have to use our z table. Now I don't have my z table with me, but my calculator can actually do that. So I'll tell you what the area is from here to here, which you would get from your z table. So if I do that, I'll have, um, let's see, from minus 0.83 up to 0, I would have the answer 0.2967. That's what you'd get if you looked it up on your table, 0.2967. And of course, get the area in the tail. We simply do 0.5 minus that. So 0.5 minus 0.2967, we get the answer 
point two zero three three. Point two zero three three. So the answer is approximately the probability that x is less than nine is approximately equal to twenty point three three percent. So that's your answer, but remember it's just an approximation, but it's probably very close, probably very close to the actual answer.